Thank you, Freak. And I think the first thing we want to touch on immediately is the fact that things were not looking good for Winter Fox there with the Fed Fizz getting the solo kill in the 1v1 against Maokai pretty early on into the game. Yeah, the changes to Fizz where his W does a little bit more damage when it's not active, and then the amplification on the level 6 Chum the Waters took Avalon completely off guard there. He actually ended up getting burst down and blowing his flash, which allowed Quas to get the split push pressure, split push pressure going. That's a, yeah, not easy to say. No. But of course, yeah, he, he, he took that CS lead to an astronomical level. Yeah. Now, the saving grace, though, on the side of Winter Fox, of course, rested with Altec just absolutely decimating Keith when it came to those CS numbers. We saw about 30 CS and 10 minutes into the game, but by the time 24 minutes rolled around, an entire hundred, a century's worth of CS had uh, fallen in the favor of Altec. And that seemed to have been uh, a big factor in those late game team fights. Yeah, even though Quas was up about 80 CS at the same time and killing Avalon in lane, the fact that Al uh, Altec had that much CS over Keith was really big because he's a consistent damage source. And then you look at Fizz, he's not the same type of AP burst assassin anymore. He's a bruiser that needs time to tick you down and chunk you down over time. So big problem there was that they were going on Phoenix on Winter Fox's side, just blowing up the back line. Whereas Quas gets in, he's like, I'm tickling Altec, who's already got a bloodthirster, who's sustaining through my damage output. Right. And given those CS discrepancies, right, because that really just sets the tone for the entire game being played out, what was interesting was the fact that Team Liquid did seem to have cured a lot of their communication problems in that in the early game, they were able to secure three turrets within 15 minutes. I mean, that is a, a, an extraordinary feat just to have that pushing. And uh, for those of you that watched uh, the feature that Team Liquid had put out, uh, their coach uh, specifically stated that one of the roles of, of having Keith on the team or one of the benefits of having Keith on the team was the fact that he... He just pushed and followed calls, pushed and followed calls, and was this consistent damage output. With Piglet, they were more concerned with funneling the farm onto him, and they weren't able to just kind of make these rotations and play the game in a more team-oriented fashion. Yeah, Keith does need a little bit more farm, though. The late-game damage output's not just going to come solely from Quas there. They need to get some of that onto the AD carry to at least match Altec. Keith, though, you know, it wasn't just the team not funneling into him. That was what it was late game. But the fact that he had made that discrepancy so early on was a huge problem. But Keith does fit their style a little better because then it allows Quas to continue farming, to continue split pushing. They seem more on the same page. And there's a bunch of team fights in that game where you can see Liquid actually have a cross the map strategy where it's like Quas is split pushing. So we're going to have these four people back up at the same time. We're not going to fight this. Lots of things going really well for Team Liquid that game. But Winter Fox knew what they had to do, and even despite being down, going for the back line and keeping Altec, which we had our, eye, our eyes on him, want to be like, can Altec carry a game? And we saw that today. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to jump into our first replay. It's about 19 minutes into the game. We're going to pull that up here. Uh, the big thing about this, though, is actually is a team fight that falls in the favor of Team Liquid. And it's kind of an example of exactly what you said, where Winter Fox knows what they need to do. They know they need to get to the back line. I feel they were a little overzealous in this scenario. Uh, and we watch Helios end up a little too deep. Well, the big thing here for me is you're going to see some chompers come out right across here from Keith that are perfect zoning chompers that put Helios in a position where he just gets picked off, but Pobelter wraps around perfectly from the top to make the kill happen. He does secure so, one kill. Let's roll that clip out for you guys. Here. And you're going to see he goes really deep into here onto Phoenix, and then the chompers come out to zone off the back line. Avalon can't go through here. Pobelter has to wait for them and walk around. Then they re-engage. And now Pobelter can go to the back line. Quas can continue to be this huge beast that just zones everybody else out. And then he eventually throws a zoning fish that gets them the dragon. But overall, that was really good communication from Team Liquid that they are peeling backwards. And Keith was being supplementary damage instead of the star of the fight. Yep. And that's what Team Liquid want from him. Yeah, definitely the Chompers and the TP in tandem were a big deterrent for the rest of the team. But of course, Poe Belter, he does sneak in those individual yeah. plays occasionally. Now, I, I kind of want to jump into our next replay. 33 minutes into the game, we're going to the mid lane because this is an example of where that farm on the AD carry can make a huge difference when the right team fight is found. Yeah, and right here is actually... You're going to see all the damage come out from Altec throughout the fight. But the big thing here is Phoenix gets jumped on immediately, and then he flashes, but he's still stunned. So the Mikhail's comes out a little late from a special, which allows them to close the distance and get all the damage they need onto him. So we'll start rolling the clip out here, and you're going to see, imagine, new guy, boom. Immediate speed boost, gets onto Phoenix, and it takes him a while to actually get that on him. And then by the time that they get there, he's exhausted. 
He's getting locked up, and they blow up Phoenix. He is the main target. The control mage burns down from the ignite, and then the fight is all Altec. Nobody can reach him. Quas's damage output to him is very minuscule, and then they lock him up because Keith is just not the same threat that Altec is to a front line. Yep, you saw both AD carries basically free. Oh, I love this. This is a great, the great oh. ending clip here. Keith does snipe the kill, and then again, to his credit, when they push into the base, manages to get another solo kill by himself. So, uh, you know, credit where credit is due. Yeah. Keith played rather fabulously. He does need to pick up his early game mechanics simply in his CSing, right? Yeah. Get himself, put himself in the position that he can lay down the consistent damage they need. I absolutely love the fact that he has a presence of mind to wrap around and know that he can, like, you don't expect the rocket to come from that angle. He knows it's not warded up. He knows he can get that. And then to be able to defend in that manner against two gap closers from Maokai and also the Vi, being able to do that is a really big thing because he's not a risk-taking AD carry. But like you said, if he can just be a little more crisp in his CS in the early game, we could see great things from Keith. Now, I really want to know what, who wanted the lane swap there over the other because there's an argument like Quas is going to do really good things against Avalon, but Keith, he might have needed a free farm lane. Well, we'll have to go use our own time to go figure out with them. We'll have an opportunity to talk to those guys, I'm sure. Uh, the big things to pull away from this game, though, are the fact that Team Liquid, they looked good. Even in defeat, they look a little bit more back to form. Winter Fox, of course, they look great. Yeah. Imagine coming in, playing strong. I love the fact that he has the confidence to make flash plays like that. So either way, great victory for them, putting them in a great position, as Freak mentioned, solidly into their third place spot. Now don't go anywhere because we'll be right back with more league action, continuing with Team 8 versus Gravity. You're watching the NALCS. Team Liquid Keith is stepping back in his AD carry and hoping to help the team rebound after last week's 0-2 finish. He gets squashed immediately. Quas is going to be coming in on this one. He's the oh level 12, my. not even needed for that. Okay, okay. Okay, Jenas, Jenas, Jenas. Pizza, pizza, I'm not Slow, 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 Peace. Nice, 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 nice. Righteous glory goes out, and it's Phoenix that gets locked down. Poe Belter goes in, but Imagine picks up that kill first. Quas to the back line. He will go down to Altac. Week five, game one. Winter Fox takes down Team Liquid.